The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to give testimony of the light that all men might believe through him. He was not the light, but was to give testimony to the light. That was the true light, which enlighteneth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them power to be made the sons of God, to them that believe in his name, who are born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as it were of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John beareth witness of him and crieth out, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that shall come after me is preferred before me because he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and did not deny, and he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said therefore unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said to him, Why then dost thou baptize, if thou be not Christ, nor Elias, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there hath stood one in the midst of you, whom you know not. The same is he that shall come after me, who is preferred before me, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethania, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming to him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, after me there cometh the man who is preferred before me, because he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he may be manifest in Israel. Therefore am I come, baptizing with water. And John gave testimony, saying, I saw the Spirit coming down as a dove from heaven, and he remained upon him. And I knew him not. But he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, he it is that baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and I gave testimony that this is the Son of God. The next day again John stood and two of his disciples. And beholding Jesus walking, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus, turning and seeing them following him, saith to them, What seek you? Who said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, 
Where dwellest thou? He saith to them, Come. They came and saw where he abode, and they stayed with him that day. Now it was about the tenth hour. And Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who had heard of John and followed him. He findeth, he findeth first his brother Simon, and saith to him, We have found the Messiah, which is, being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus, looking upon him, said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is interpreted Peter. On the following day, he would go forth into Galilee, and he findeth Philip. And Jesus said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come from Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and he said to him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said to him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered him and said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, thou believest? Greater things than these shalt thou see. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you shall see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Thus far are the words of the Holy Gospel. Praise to thee, O Christ. Just a couple comments here. Uh, those of you that attend the traditional Latin Mass, you recognize that the first half of this chapter is the last gospel. It's read at the end of every Mass, and it teaches us many things, but two things in particular. The first is, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word, the Logos, is the eternal second person of the Trinity, the Son of God. And this shows us that the error of Arius, that the Word that the Son of God was created or had a beginning is false. The Word was with God in the very beginning, before even creation, and is co-eternal and consubstantial with the Father. Now, if you attend the traditional Latin Mass, you also know that when we get to verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, here we genuflect, we bend down to reverence that the Son of God, the eternal Son of God, the Logos, was incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And this is why we genuflect to the earth, because the Word of God, the Son of God, came to earth in the immaculate womb of the Virgin Mary. Just one more observation here, and that is how we see St. Andrew as the first evangelist. He goes and he finds his brother, Peter. And then we see a series of evangelization. We find Philip and he goes and finds Nathaniel and there's the dialogue there about the fig tree. Uh, so what we see here, and this is a great example for us during Advent, is when we encounter Jesus Christ, we go to other people, our brother, our friend, and say, I have found the Messiah. I have found the Son of God. Come and see. That's what they say. They say, come and see. So what we have to do as Christians, as Catholics, is we've encountered Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We have to tell other people, come and see. Here he is. So this is the primordial evangelization, the old evangelization of Andrew evangelizing his brother Simon, who becomes Peter, and then Philip, who goes and finds Nathaniel. Uh, one more interesting thing here is we find early on in the call of Simon, that Christ says, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is interpreted Peter. So this is this, inc this, uh, this incident here is way before, perhaps even a, a year and a half before 
the Matthew 16, you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church. So from the very beginning of the calling of Simon, Christ our Lord says, you will be called Cephas. You will be Peter. It's an important teaching for, for Catholics. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening, and uh, I'll come back with chapter two. God bless and Godspeed.